morning, everybody. Today is Monday. Happy fresh start of a new week. Yesterday was such a like chilled, relaxed day and also like minimally productive. I uh, tried on all of the different bras that I've ordered so far, packaged up the ones that I'm going to send back, packaged up the H&M order that I'm going to send back. I'm going to return that skirt. It's just too see-through. And the dress, the green dress, the shirt dress, we're definitely going to return that. I'm returning a little over half of the bras. I, of the 10 that I received so far, um, I'm keeping three. So I feel like that's a good start to rebuild a bra collection. Um, what else? Oh, I'm returning that like sage green dress that I showed you, the one shoulder. I really like it, but it would suit me better if I could sew it to like my body proportions, if that makes sense. And the fabric just doesn't feel very breathable. I can't find a tag anywhere in it, so I have no clue what it's uh, made out of. It feels polyester-y, so I just don't know if it's gonna be the most breathable. I feel like that would be a great dress to have in linen. I even love the color. It's just, yeah, the proportions in the fabric are not suitable. And yeah, so that stuff's all packaged in the hall, ready for me to drop off at USPS. I'm still awaiting um, two more bra deliveries, but I think the other, the ones I've already received have the most amount in them. And yeah, that's the update for today. The garden is looking so beautiful right now. Another daffodil has opened up, I can see from the window, so I'm excited to go out and show you that later. And yeah, it's gonna be a great day. Yesterday we did not do our grocery shopping. I, Andrew was out playing games yesterday, so when he got home we made like our grocery list and I think we're gonna go sometime today. We still have a few like little leftover bits and pieces for me to make. My lunch, I'm gonna make the same salad I made last week for my lunch. Oh, I'm so addicted. It's so, so, so good. I really, really love it. I have a blog post up actually, I'll link it in the description box about like what goes into making a good salad because I feel like salads are really underrated and not to like toot toot my own horn, but I am pretty good at making a salad because I think I've cracked the code at what makes them taste good. So I will link that blog in the description box for you about what I feel goes into making a good salad. Basically at the core, it's just like variety of hot and cold and also variety of textures in it, like crunchy, soft, creamy, fresh. It's like, it's gotta have variety to keep your palate entertained. So shout out to uh, Brent who sent me a picture of his Olive Garden salad that he made. It's so good. <laughs> It's not the same one I've been making for my lunch. This new one I've been making for my lunch, I am just, yeah, equally, I'm so obsessed with it. Um, going on my second week of making that, so, yeah. But anyway, happy Monday. I just wanted to say hello, and I'll check in with you guys later on. Once I discover that there are so many non-yellow varieties, I sort of just went crazy with daffodil purchases this year. I love this one. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll put it on the screen. And I love how all of the white ones are the ones, like all the white flowers, I mean, are the ones that are blooming first. Cause it gives it, you know, some different textures and bloom shapes, but it doesn't overwhelm the garden because everything is kind of a similar color, which was what I was hoping. So this one is one called Exotic Emperor. This is another Exotic Emperor. These ones right here I think are called Mondial. It's really pretty. It's a little bit shorter than Exotic Emperor. And the Exotic Emperor has these like kind of green spiky things from it. I mean they're not sharp or anything, it's just aesthetic. Yeah, they're really pretty. And the bridal crown daffodils are so pretty. They're much more scented than any other daffodil that I have in the garden. Not as many flowers as early cheer. The early cheers are starting to go over now. I think the early cheers are still my favorite. Look, there's some purple ones on the way. I'm so excited. Oh, and then there's the hyacinths. These are just bags of compost over here, local compost. Here's hyacinth, I believe the variety is called blue jacket. There's a couple of them in here so far. Yeah, it's looking super magical. That's a uh, new plant order that just arrived. 
this is my latest order from Bluestone Perennials. These are actually the same plant, but this one is in much better shape than this one is. I'm not loving the quality of that plant right there. This one is called Panicum Northwind. It's a switchgrass. It's really pretty. And then this, this is really the main reason I wanted this order. It's called um, Clematis Jackmanii and it's a purple clematis. Smaller than I was anticipating, actually, but we'll see how it gets on. In terms of pricing, this order from Bluestone Perennials is basically the exact same as White Flower Farm, and I think in the future I'll probably order from White Flower Farm. The quality of these plants is not as good as White Flower Farms were. Let's go look at White Flower Farm, you can see what I mean. And white flower farms were also a lot bigger. <laughs> so these are all the plants I received from white flower farm. And yes, they've been out of the box for a few days. So they're gonna look better than bluestone perennials ones are, but they just look better. So white flower farm for me in the future, but that's what, you know, I have to experiment, I have to try. So I'm going to get my new plants in the greenhouse, nurse some of these back to a little more health. And yeah, they should be just fine. The phlox I'm really excited about. It's a variety called Cloud of Perfume and it's a woodland phlox. This part of the garden doesn't get as much sunlight as the rest of it does. So I'm gonna put the woodland phlox here because I think it will be a nice like front of border plant um, that will do well in shade. It's been quite warm the past few days, so the babies are needing a lot more water. Poor things came out. You can see some of them are quite sad and droopy, so I'm just kind of watering from below. They'll bounce back though. I just definitely need to keep a closer eye out now that the weather is getting so warm. I have this automatic vent that will open on its own when it gets too hot in here, and this has been opening every single day recently. So yeah, just have to come and check on them a little bit more. My first floor neighbor put a bird feeder up uh, on their little patio area. So it's attracting so many birds and the birds are now also noticing that there are termites in the soil down there because they're coming to, you know, treat that today. And I'm like, yes, birds, get those termites. Eat all of them. Oh, I have to put water in the pot to make it boil. Hello. <laughs> Are you vlogging? So I just watched a video where with a Kylie Flavelle video uh, where she makes like a chicken soup all day on the stovetop. Mm -hmm. She makes her own broth and I don't know, it just looked really good. In this moment in time, my eyes are totally streaming. I'm not sure where the Tupperware okay. even I is. I'm going to open the handle because I have chicken hands. <laughs> you know, the health department is going to close our restaurant down. <laughs> Good thing we're not opening a restaurant. Oh my god, my eyes. The onions, it hurts so much. I've been in a mostly non-fiction mood so far this year. The Midnight Library is the first fiction book that I've read in a really long time, which is very strange for me. I'm normally very much a fiction book reader, but I've been very into the non-fiction about gardening, about design, about um, like the Mark Kurlansky books that I was telling you about a few vlogs ago. 
uh, France books of all kinds. So yeah, I've been doing a very nonfiction phase for a while, but I feel like I want to read another fiction book after the Midnight Library. That one was really good. So what should I read? All right, these are my next contenders. All seven. I don't know which one to read next. I put a poll up in my Instagram stories just now to see what people say, because I can't decide. I have a feeling a lot of people I know are probably gonna recommend The Red Queen or Lesson in Vengeance. These two get recommended quite a bit. City of Girls and In Five Years were two that I saw in Strand and I was just really intrigued by. Same for The Vanishing Half, the story looks incredible. And then these two are just totally judged by the cover and I love anything witchy, so naturally. Good morning everybody. It is a little after eight o'clock. I've been up since seven reading In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. It seemed so similar to Midnight Library that I felt like I would give it a go just to kind of like get this whole parallel universe thing out of my system. I'm really liking it so far though. It um, is set in New York City and she does a lot of talking about New York City restaurants and places and I don't know like She's not afraid to name drop brands, not in like a name drop, do you know who I am kind of way. It's just like, I feel like a lot of authors stay away from naming particular brands or particular places because they don't know if it's going to even be in business after a few years, but she's like not afraid to do that. And so it's kind of makes it kind of fun to read about it. Like, for example, even one of the restaurants that she talks about in here called Bouvet, I think they went out of business during the pandemic. So yeah, it's it's really cool. I'm really enjoying it. I would definitely recommend it so far. It's a very easy potato chippy read. But yeah, so it's a little after eight, like I said, I'm going to do a quick little workout, take a shower and then get myself ready for the day. Happy Thursday evening. <laughs> We're in the <laughs> We're in the kitchen about to make dinner for the evening. We're making a uh, chicken pot pie, homemade. It's gonna be delicious, fingers crossed. We've never made the recipe before, so it's gonna be a new one that we're trying out. apart because part of what makes it a little bit lighter is that there's not crust around the entire thing but it still tastes pretty good it needed a lot more seasoning and salt than I think the recipe calls for but I don't mind it what do you think about it texture flavor texture's okay we added more of that almond milk to it mm -hmm. I, I think non-fat milk next time instead of the almond milk. The almond milk just gives it a kind of strange flavor. Yeah, it's too sweet. Yeah, even though it's an unsweetened almond milk, but it just, there's no sugar in it, but it tastes odd with it, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a little, I think, I think a little bit of cream. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And we added, like, adobo. You need, it definitely needs more of, like, a... Seasoning. Yeah. And chicken flavor. Chicken flavor. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. I've spent a little bit of time reading this morning. I like to begin my day with a little bit of reading. I usually wake up around like 6.45ish and then read until like 7.45, 8ish. And then if I'm gonna do a workout, I do a workout or I'll come out to the garden or just kind of, I take my mornings very slowly, but I'm really enjoying in five years. It's not like going to shatter your world or anything, but it is very interesting. I, it's really fun, it's a fun read for sure. But yeah, I'm just out in the garden this morning. Things change so quickly. Look at this. A new tulip has bloomed. This one is called Charming Beauty. It's one of my like most anticipated ones for 
this season for the tulips especially so so beautiful and then over here oh what's it called obdum something like that this is a new daffodil isn't that so pretty it's huge it's like as big as my hand and there's so many of them the tulips are just going insane right now and then there's a variety called here it is columbus that was like a freebie with my purchase and it's this pink one right here i'm normally not like huge into pink i love like blushes and apricots when it comes to flowers not super bright pink but hey they were free why wouldn't i plant them so i think this is that columbus variety but we'll see it's just starting to kind of bloom here yeah everything is just looking so so good exterminator came yesterday to treat the termites so hopefully that does the trick um i did plant my ranunculus and my anemones i have to say anemones let me show you maybe they're looking better today it's been a few days since i planted them but they're just so floppy and unattractive like the foliage yeah see like some of them this one's kind of standing straight up but these right here like totally floppy and this is a pretty full sun part of the garden back here so i don't know it just never looks very good i don't love I don't love anemones. I never really seem to have a whole lot of luck with them, but maybe if they flower for me this year, finally, I'll change my mind. You know, contrasting to the ranunculus, which makes a nice, like, upright, bushy plant. And upright growth is definitely something you want when it comes to small gardens. That's the secret, I think, to, in my opinion, to getting a harmonious scheme when you love a lot of plants is to stick to a tight color palette. So I have like a lot of whites, a lot of creams, and then I wanna do purples in here and then some subtle leaning into the yellow apricots. So that's the scheme. And this way I can plant as many different plants as I want. I just have to kind of stick to that color palette. And over in the seed tray, look at this tiny viola grown from seed. So a really exciting and very unexpected project coming up. So for those of you who don't know, I've told some of you in the comments, I'm not sure that I've like ever talked about it on my channel before, but Andrew and his dad own a contracting business together. They do mostly kitchen and bathroom renovations residentially around New York City. Uh, whenever they have a lull in their own work, like when they're between projects and they have like enough of a chunk of time, they tend to renovate or improve their own properties. So we have a very unexpected opportunity to renovate this bathroom. It's not like in terrible shape by any means, but there are a few things that I'd want to change. So I'm really, really excited because I get to design this bathroom now, which is really fun. Because we know we want to move away from New York City in the next like three to five-ish years, nothing is set in stone. I have no information about that yet. It's just kind of like, you know, things we're thinking about for the future. We've put a pause on using our own money to invest in this apartment anymore because we know we want to move. So we need to save up money for that. But now this really amazing opportunity through the business has come up. So I'm super excited about it. I get to renovate this bathroom. <laughs> So I thought I would give you kind of a before tour and show you some of the ideas and things that we definitely want to change. It's not going to be like a really heavy lift. Like I love the floors. I love hexagon tile floors. So that's not going anywhere. But as you can see, like this right here is kind of crumpling. The vanity is so old. It like water pools in this corner right here. We quite like wipe that every day, but water just like falls off because it's slanted and not set in there properly. I want to take down this cabinet. We need to repaint because we put up uh, these towel bars and when we remove the old ones, the color is still um, like the white walls from when somebody painted it red. I we actually love the red. So I think I'm going to just try to color match this color that's in here. 
And then as for the tile, I'm not really sure. I know when we take this beadboard down, I'm pretty sure, 99% sure, that there is tile underneath this beadboard because we tried to drill into this to put our towel bars on here and could not get through so we're guessing that there is tile underneath that it looks like somebody else tried to do the same thing with a toilet paper roll holder so that's why it's attached over here so i'm 99 percent sure that there is tile under here but that means that if we take off the beadboard which i like but the beadboard needs to be replaced because of the holes that people have tried to drill into it, not knowing that there's probably tile underneath here. Um, if we remove the beadboard, the tiles are gonna be, have aged differently because this one's been covered, this one's not. Um, if we decide to tile over here, the tile won't match. So it's got to be retiled if we don't just put up beadboard again, which we might, we might, I'm not sure. So yeah, just some other little things like I want to paint the outside of the tub black. My style is very much like a black, white, and then a dominant color within the scheme. So like our kitchen, we kind of got to renovate our kitchen in a similar way, but this was our own money for this one. But yeah, we did like a black and white kitchen with like green accents and gold, kind of like antique gold hardware. Um, our living room is definitely a dominant green color, but it's like green and wood. Um, so yeah, so the bathroom will be kind of a similar idea. It'll be like black, white, black and white with like a walnut wood accents. And then we'll probably paint the bathroom red again. But yeah, it's just really exciting. I'm excited to take you guys along. Their renovations are like tornadoes. They're so fast, so efficient. Like they have such a great crew and they're so talented at what they do. So I'm really excited to get to renovate this bathroom. I'm really excited for a new vanity, like, <laughs> and Mika's excited to munch on my toothbrush, great. Hello, it's been a lovely day so far. I just got out of my book club meeting. We read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig for this month's book, for the April book. And yeah, I really, really loved it. Highly recommend if you're looking for something to, uh, to read. The May book is Circe, and I know that book is so popular and a lot of people really love it, but mythology is just not really my thing. It's so popular and made it into popular culture that I have to think that there is kind of like a poppy, kind of pop culture mythology element to it somehow just because it was so popular. So I'm crossing my fingers that I like it because I'm really loving being in this book club at work. So yes, I'm going to go pick that up from Strand. Um, I'm going to pick up a book for my sister while I'm there, and yeah, it's going to be hopefully a good one. Today has been such a productive day so far. I've made a lot of progress on my work projects. I got my wedding invitations uh, sent to the printer, ordered envelopes for it, scheduled a cake tasting. Now I'm on my way to the post office so that I can send back the bras that didn't fit. Yeah, amazing. Such a good day. Just dropped off the package. But anyway, in addition to all of this, with a stroke of luck, I have found, okay, so it's kind of a long story, but there's this girl I follow on Instagram. Her name is MJ. Her account is called uh, What MJ Grows. And she found or discovered that Home Depot is selling a 15 inch terracotta pot like actual terracotta, not resin, not plastic, a 15 inch terracotta pot for $10 on sale. Like that is unheard of for a pot that size, but they won't ship it. New York stock is always so tricky. So none of the stores have had it in stock, but there's a store in Queens that got four of them in and I bought all four of them online today and selected in-store pickup but I knew it was like kind of a gamble because they have to be able to actually locate said pots and then they let you know um, if you can come and pick it up. But they did, they found all four. So I get to pick up four of these enormous pots for $40. Like what a steal, that is insane. I'm so excited about it. So just spreading the good word that if you're looking for a deal on terracotta pots and you have a Home Depot near you, it's, I'll leave it linked in the description box below, $9.98 for a 15 inch terracotta pot. Go get you some. I am pleased to report 
that the hydrangea in the Arbor Garden is very much alive. Look at all these buds. It tricked me. It tricked me. And my Olivia Rose, I believe, is going to be the first one to bloom this year. Teeny tiny little buds on Olivia. So exciting. There are also teeny buds on my Desdemona. Last year, Ambridge was the first to bloom. We will see. We will see. Look at all this growth. I cannot believe a Wollerton Old Hall. This grew like this after a year. It used to be a tiny bare root, just like that right there. And now, after one season, top of the trellis. Just got back to finish my work day. The princess is in my chair. Can you, can you sit here? Not here. Oh. This route has some traffic. We're on our way to pick up my pots from Home Depot. Let's play a game of how long do you guys think it will take to go five miles at 3.30 in New York City on a Friday. Just put, place your bets in your head. 20 hours later. Talked up a big game and it only took 30 minutes. I am shocked the though. The way back is gonna be a nightmare though. I am shocked because like normally, especially during rush hour, I feel like this would have taken like an hour to get here for yeah, five miles. Yeah. So on 500 feet, turn right onto Morris Avenue. We, it's like mid-afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. But on the way back. The, you think it's gonna be bad on the way back? The the highway was already jammed up bumper to bumper for the full. Yeah. Fingers crossed, but yeah, I talked up a lot. Maybe I'll just talk it up again and be like, oh, look how bad it's going to be on the way home. And then it'll be no, like taking, smooth sailing. We're taking side streets back. Look at these sweet, sweet pots. $10 a pot. Goods are secured. Now it's going to take forever to get home, you guys. Just wait, just wait. Watch and see. It's going to take ages. garden center that I see all the time but it's never open. It's called Natty's Garden Center. It probably wasn't open because it was winter and it's open. Plants galore. Andrew just like skr skr pulled right over. <laughs> I just got out now I'm looking. No purchases, um, but nice to know that they are there. They had a lot of good selection, reasonable prices for Brooklyn. I chatted with a girl who was working there when I asked her the price of a clematis. Um, and it was her first day and we had this lovely chat about how she was really excited about starting the job. And I'm like, yes, this is like one of my dream jobs. I have a million dream jobs, but this would be one of them, working at a garden center or at a garden. Yeah, it was cute. A lovely little interaction. Back home with my MJ pots. <laughs> I can't believe I got all four of them. I'm so excited, so excited. I'm gonna be putting hydrangeas in both of those. My mom got me a lot of plants for Christmas this year and they're just starting to arrive. And the hydrangeas arrived today. It's a variety called Blue Jangles. So it's like a purpley blue color. I'm so excited about it. They're gonna look amazing. Just look at all these tulips. This new one that's blooming, Charming Beauty my favorite so far i absolutely love it and of course mondi or not mondial um exotic emperor the blooms are enormous they're so impressive but the garden is so scented right now probably mostly because of the daffodils the tulips smell really good too but like these bridal crown daffodils smell amazing
this on fresh pepper? Uh, no. Pesto all week and then you order pesto. Mm -hmm. That's what I was gonna cook. <laughs> Thank you, that's good. Why are you here? No. How is this? No, this is the last level. Stop. How did this happen? He's just a genius. Really this is the last level. I just saw a bumblebee in my daffodils and tulips. I'm really excited. Uh, good morning. I'm out in the garden first thing. I brought my hydrangeas outside. Right. They're in. They're planted. They look happy. I think I've decided I'm going to take out that fig tree or at least put it on Craigslist. I'm going to keep the pot because the pot is enormous. So I'm thinking I might do um, a dahlia in the middle and then surround it with like frothy cosmos. I think that would look amazing back here. I really need to find myself the perfect like either a little fold-up chair so I can just put it in the greenhouse underneath the tables when I'm not using it or I was even thinking like a more permanent uh, like an egg crate chair like the hanging ones that are like kind of a rocking chair and an egg crate. Yeah I don't know we'll see. Good morning! We're going to brunch. We're trying a new spot. Finally. No, I say finally because of me, not because of him. I'm the one that always wants to go to the same place. We're going to Oliver Bistro, a French place. Here we are, Oliver Bistro. Looks cute. <laughs> I'm looking through my patterns, hoping to pick out something that I can sew today. I haven't finished my striped top yet, but that's because I'm like waffling on how to cut the sleeves evenly. And luckily for me, um, Emily is gonna be coming over today and she's a fantastic sewist. So I'm sure she's gonna have a lot of recommendations for how I can finish this top well. Whenever I'm dragging my feet on fixing something or sewing something, I know it's because I don't really know exactly how to go about it or I don't like it for some reason. And I do love the top. It's so in this case, it's just because I can't figure out how to properly cut back the sleeve to be like my inspiration photo. So I'm glad she's coming over because she can help me fix that. Cause other than that, it's just cutting and hemming the sleeve and then attaching um, fasteners to the back like halter neck. So there's not anything like that's it to be, to finish it. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm glad Emily's gonna be coming over. But in the meantime, I would like to pick out something new to sew. And I forgot, I purchased this. So like that one shoulder top is so similar to the one I showed you guys in my last video that dress that I purchased that just didn't fit me quite right. So I have that and I even love the non gathered tiers on like I like that this is just like a slit. I think this is so classy and pretty. I, I just love that dress. So that is definitely a contender. Um, I'll show you some stuff when I pull it out. I'm going to look through like my big pattern stash right here. Uh, and see if there's anything that's like really jumping out at me and then I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking. I know I showed you uh, some inspiration pieces a few videos ago, so I'm keeping that in the back of my head as well to see if there's anything I can use to kind of hack those ready-to-wear uh, dresses uh, and skirts and pieces that I saw. So I'm keeping that in my mind as I search through my pattern stash. Mm, so many options that I've pulled out that I like. 
All right, these are all of the patterns that I pulled out. <laughs> Starting with this one, which I only pulled out not because I wanna make it again, but because I remembered, hey, where is this whip that I know I started? I know I made this skirt, but I didn't finish it. I remember not finishing it completely. So I dug into, there's a plastic tub over there, a plastic tub that has a lot of my UFOs, AKA unfinished objects and pulled out a bunch of those, including this adorable skirt, which only needs like a zipper fix and some hemming, and then it would be done. I do need to take it in just a little bit, but yeah, this is such a cute skirt. I need to finish this. I do wish that mine, I tried it on. I do wish that mine had as much volume as this one does, but this was made with a scuba knit and I did not make mine with a scuba knit, but I love, the volume in the skirt. I think it's so cute, but mine is like a check fabric that I, I still really, really like the skirt. And it was, um, from what I remember, like interesting and fun to make with these giant pleats on it. But yeah, so I'm thinking maybe today I could spend some time finishing that before I start something else, because I feel like that would be such a quick fix. But okay, so prepare yourself. If you don't want to hear about all these projects and pattern ideas or see patterns, you could just skip ahead. But Here's what I have. Okay, this is the one I just finished, or I'm about to finish that top there. This one, I love View B. I've cut it out before the largest size, before kind of looking at the pattern pieces and thinking, hmm, this looks like it's going to be too small for me. So if I do make it, I'll have to do some finagling with cutting the pattern pieces larger, but I do think that's really cute. Very summery. This one, I love uh, this view right here with the overlay, but I don't have any fabrics in my stash right now, believe it or not, with this amazing stash. I don't have any like lace fabrics like that that would work. I have black chiffon, so I could do like something that would work underneath black chiffon, so that's a possibility, so maybe. This one, love this skirt pattern. I've been wanting to make this for ages, and I'm thinking of turning it into a dress. So I love the idea of pairing this with some sort of bodice. I just don't know which one, but I do have a fabric in mind. This one, potentially, potentially. It's an embroidered stripe. And oh, I just think that would be so cute. Although I did just work with a striped fabric. So maybe I should give stripes a break, but I do love a good stripe and I think that would be a fantastic use for that fabric because it's been one of my favorites in my stash for ages but I just can't decide what to do with it so I think that would be a good one. This one as we've discovered I do have a one shoulder top in my pattern stash and I feel like a number of my fabrics would look absolutely amazing with this. Honestly it's just like take my pick. I think this really shows off a good print. It would be good for solids. If I made it in a solid, I'd probably wear it more often. But yeah, I think there's, I have a number of fabrics that could be perfect for this. Hello, kitty. These two corsets, I've made this one before. Absolutely love the top. Um, but do you guys remember that dress that I showed you that has like a corset top, but it's like a shirt dress. So if I could add sleeves to it and then a skirt, I think this one is actually better than this one. This one's more like my original inspo with all of the seam lines in it, but I've not made this one before. And it's definitely more of an investment in my time because of all the seam lines in it. But I kind of like things that have a lot of seams because it gives you more opportunities for fitting. So if something is like a little too big or too small, it's, it's much easier to, fit things with a lot of seams because you have more options to fix it. Crop tops, so in right now, and I love them. I haven't made View B yet. I've used View A to make a dress. The dress, I have to say, is kind of ill-fitting because I have to lengthen the things in the shoulders quite a bit, and it's just too short in the shoulders, so it digs into my underarm right here. So all I really need to do is just detach the shoulder seam and add some more length with leftover fabric that I have in my stash from that same dress, but I just haven't prioritized it. I'm really bad about going back and fixing things that I've made just because I often don't really sew for the, uh, well, at least I used to, not sew because I needed to, I just sewed for the fun of it. But I really wanna be able to wear a lot of the beautiful things that I've made. So I really should go back and fix that dress. 
This is a vintage pattern, just some really cute summery tops. I love this view right here, the white one. I think that one's really adorable. Another great dress pattern. Absolutely in love with that. This one I would love to do a combo of using this bodice with this sheath dress. So I can just imagine, I like this bodice more than this one, so I like the idea of doing a little combo. This could be a great bachelorette dress if I made it in all white. I think that would look beautiful. Vogue uh, V2 or V9 V9251. Uh, they've since renamed this pattern to something else, or it's a different number now, but it's their wrap dress. It's the same. This is a pattern I've made several times, and it's just a pattern I go back to when I'm kind of stuck and don't know what to make because it always looks good, and it's always, like, simple, fun to sew, and, yeah, it's just a pattern that works really well for my body. McCall's M7974. I've made this two times now this white top right here that I still haven't added the buttons to, which is stupid because that's all I need to do on it. And then I've made another top that I wear quite often with it too, but I've never made the dress version of it. And I really would just like to make either view A or view D. I love both of those, so, because it fits so well. And then this is just such a sexy dress. It's so beautiful, but it takes a lot of fabric. Like, I want to say seven yards or something like that. Well, I guess that's for the extra, extra large. No, it does. For the medium and the large, six and an eighth, six, six yards and an eighth of a yard, and then seven and a quarter yards for the large. So I'm sure I'd be between those two sizes, probably. Probably the medium. I've heard this one kind of fits a little bit oversized, so I could probably get away with sewing the medium, but still. Six yards and a little change for this pattern. So it is definitely... A fabric eater and then last but not least this one which I have made before I've made view C and it's a lovely dress I haven't actually it hasn't gotten as much wear as I would have hoped for it I think the waist and hip fits me really well but the bust is a little bit gapey so I'm always kind of self-conscious that my boob is gonna pop out so I it doesn't get the wear that it should it does fit me quite well but I guess I'm just a little hesitant because of that. So it has to be kind of an event where I'm going to be standing a lot and not like sitting or leaning over a lot and you just never really know. So that's kind of a shame, but I do really want to give this one another go because I love the final result and how it looks. So those are kind of what I'm thinking. Sometimes I start with a pattern and then go to fabric and then sometimes I'm inspired by a fabric and then try to find a suitable pattern. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to approach this yet, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. More often than not, when it comes to like what I'm inspired by, usually I see something in ready to wear and I want to dupe it for several reasons. Like I think duping stuff is just really fun. It's a fun challenge, but also because I have a pear shaped body, like I'm sure many of you do, Dresses can be quite tricky sometimes because I need a smaller size in the top and a larger size in the waist and hips. So it's just a bit of a challenge some, sometimes to find clothing that like fits me well. Or I'll see something and be like, I like this and this and this, but I don't like that. So obviously with sewing, you can change whatever you want, which is, you know, fun and part of the magic. Okay. I've narrowed it down, narrowed it down to seven projects. Um, yeah, let's take a look. I'll show you. First up, I think this one would just be really quick and something I would wear a lot. View B, I already kind of know what to expect with the fit and I've got some learnings I could take away from making this to apply to this. And I just like this kind of like army green lightweight twill. I think that will look really cute and because it's a twill weave this will kind of stand out a little bit but not too much because it's lightweight so yeah I think this would be an excellent excellent combo this is a really high contender next up I have this uh, linen 100% linen stripe and I think I can make this with it my only concern I think that's I've had this fabric for a while what holds me up from using it is that the stripe, it's like a, it's a big stripe. It's like a half an inch stripe. So it's kind of a loud stripe, if you get what I mean. So this is a lot of fabric, like a lot covering my body. 
I sort of wonder if something like this would be better for a short dress where like my skin tone would like tone down like ha like having more skin out would tone down the overall effect like the dress would not be wearing me I would be wearing the dress if it was shorter so I'm tempted to turn this into a shorter dress but I like I like the design of it so I just don't know if the stripe is a little too bold for that pattern next up this uh crepe it's a polyester actually but i love the color it doesn't maybe doesn't look super flattering but on my skin tone it, it actually works really really well so i really like this color and was thinking apparently this is a top and a skirt i didn't know that but i would love the idea of making this top i think that would be really really cute no ruffle i would leave the ruffle out it would just be similar to my inspiration piece. I can put a picture on the screen again to show you. Then as I showed you earlier, I love this embroidered stripe. So I feel like I could use this or the three tier, probably the three tier actually, three tier for the skirt. And then I love this bodice right here and I could do a contrasting color that matches this, like maybe even a red. I don't know that I have a red that's like a similar weight to this. So that's kind of what holds me up from going like all in on this one. But I love the idea of doing that bodice on this skirt. It's very Bahida Dalek designs. Then I can't get this kind of style out of my head. I love it. And I have a lot of leftover fabric. I use this to make, where did it go? This pattern a long time ago. And I have a little over like between one and a half to two yards. The pattern does call for two and a quarter yards for the outside and a two and a quarter yards for the lining. So the dress is fully lined. I'm sure I can get away with just lining the bodice and not lining the skirt. So I think that would work out really well. There's a waist seam, right? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like I could just line the bodice and not line the skirt and it would be fine um, and cut it a little bit shorter. So this would be like a great test run for this pattern. I really, I'm really drawn to this. And then, I forgot to show this like when I bought it on Instagram, but I have this amazing celestial print fabric. It's see-through. And then I have lots of just like solid black to put over it. So I could make this, I could make it. And I feel like because it's a short dress, I will get a lot of wear. It won't like the, again, another situation where a really bold pattern, the dress will not wear me. I'll be able to wear it more often if it's shorter than if I made, you know, like I have enough fabric, honestly, to make something like this, where if like the underlay was black, but then the outside was this, but really that's like such an event dress. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't really have a lot of events to be wearing something so, you know, eventy too. So I feel like if I made it, a short dress I could get more wear out of it and then the last um, project is a corset or a corset dress of some sort just because I never don't want to make a corset I love lingerie as fashion so uh, yeah love it I can't really figure out what fabric I would use to make this though that's the only thing that holds me back because I don't want to use a dark fabric or a highly patterned fabric because then you won't see all of the seams on it. And I don't want to go through all this trouble for something that I wouldn't be able to see all of the architecture of the top. So I need to have a think about what kind of fabric I would like to use. I won't, I'll cut the corset shorter and then attach a skirt to it. And I think that would look so cute. So, so cute. So yeah, and I even love, it's not like quite sweetheart because I'm not really into sweetheart necklines with this just little like slight dip on the neckline. Yeah, I really, really love this, but I don't know what fabric to use for it yet. So I'm probably going to hold off on that. <sighs> I'm thinking I'm drawn to doing either this one, this one, or this one. And I'm leaning toward this just because I think I need some sort of palette cleanser project just to get me back into the sewing, back into making something again. And I think this will just be a quick and easy win. There's probably not that many pattern pieces and it will be just like a fun little quick one to make. And then I can take on something with gathering and tears and, you know, I don't know, something more fall on. Although this one honestly looks incredibly simple 
as well. And the projects that I looked up on Instagram with the pattern hashtag 8142, they all look really, really pretty. So there weren't a ton, but I liked the ones that I saw. So that is showing me that this is a good, a good pattern and that it looks true to how it looks on the model, which is always a good sign. So yeah, okay, I think I'm gonna start with that one. I'm gonna put this away, put this away, I'm gonna put this away for now until I have some sort of event to make this for because honestly, if there's anything I need to be making something for an event, it's my wedding or my bachelorette party. And this isn't exactly bachelorette party or screaming wedding in any capacity. So maybe I'll hold off on that one. But I really do love this dress and wanna give it a go. So this or this will be upcoming after I finish that. Emily is on her way, she's almost here, so I have to get out the glasses and the Prosecco. Prosecco is our tradition. Anytime she comes over here, we drink Prosecco. I don't know why, I don't really know how this got started. I guess we just did it consistently for a few times when she came over, and now it's just become this thing where we have Prosecco every time she comes over, and we do crafts, and it's fun, and we chit chat, and it's amazing. You are very into your taste, which I think is great. I like your taste, but you're also like acknowledge that it's your taste and mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it's like any better or objectively bad. Yeah, yeah. I knew she would know how to do this. <laughs> the professional has arrived to save the day. Yes. Here she comes to save the day. Final thoughts. From definitely and I think a lot of it is like creating a habit of yeah. making you know right. so that doesn't like always come naturally yeah. so I'm pretty sure my parents have no clue like what it is I actually <laughs> do but they're still supportive of it anyway and that's, that's you know funny. that's what, what matters do do? I don't even know <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you what I think that they think <laughs> Because I'm sure they saw like my design projects in school and they were like, oh, yeah. cool, this looks great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, they're like, but how do you make money on that? <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't explain. So cute. Yay. I love it so much. I can't believe how much it looks like the inspiration top. It looks amazing. Very excited. Last time Emily was here, she was working on a quilt. This time she brought a cross stitch. And I know lots of you are cross stitch fans. So I'm showing you her needle book. Is that what this, this yeah. It's I so guess it's pretty. It's like a needle roll. And this is what you're currently working mm -hmm. on. This is BR's Moth by Kathy Barrick. BR's Moth? BR's Moth by Kathy Barrick. Mm -hmm. So amazing, I love it. Spring. Uh, I have never seen our neighborhood so crowded before. The Brooklyn Half Marathon ends in our neighborhood. Uh, which is happening today so there are so many people here it's really cool actually I kind of like it i miss the hubbub that bay ridge had on the more in the mornings good morning happy sunday we are headed to the local bookstore to get a book for uh, my sister's birthday present to get the book and I'm gonna get for my sister at my local bookstore but unfortunately they did not have it it is um, the bookstore crawl this weekend which is apparently the first weekend 
are the first time that they've had the bookstore crawl in three years because of COVID. So that's really cool. They do not have my book, but now we're in Astor Place, so I can go to Strand and hopefully get it there. We're also gonna stop at The Bean, one of my favorite coffee shops. We're stopping at The Bean to get my, like my all-time favorite coffee drink of all time. Normally, I only drink uh, just like regular cold brew, but they have this drink called the Nutella Fitzgerald, which is just essentially this most delicious frozen beverage that's made with Nutella, so. I have no business buying more. You, you eat books though. I know, it's true. I've been reading a lot lately. What did you get? Uh, I got um, uh, American Psycho because I've never read the book. I've never read the book or seen the movie. Uh, I've got William Tecumseh Sherman. Hey, sounds because great. I like crazy sad boys. <laughs> And then uh, this is uh, about the Siege of Leningrad, which I've read before, but I lent my copy to somebody and I know I'll never see it again. <laughs> uh, so. Yes, I got um, a book for my sister, which I don't want to reveal in case she watches this. I'm not sure if she does or not, but it's a book I've read recently. I got uh, Circe, which I have not read, but my book club is reading. And uh, I'm not so sure, honestly, if I'm gonna like that one. I'm not really big into mythology, so we'll see. Uh, I bought this one called A Paris Apartment, and I'm not gonna say that the title did not draw me in for obvious reasons, but it sort of seems like, have you guys seen that show called Only Murders in the Building? Because that's what it, the vibes it gives me, and that show is so cute. Steve Martin, definitely watch it. It's so, so good. Is it on Hulu? Yeah, it was on Hulu. Yeah, so good. Steve Martin, Martin Short, and uh, Ariana Grande? Uh, or Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cute. Pop. And um, I, I also... Mr. Sherman, I don't know pop. <laughs> I also got... Uh, so the book I just finished, In Five Years, by Rebecca Searle. She apparently also wrote another book, so I went ahead and picked that one up because it was inexpensive. So that's my book haul. We're at Ipido right now, ramen. Blake to get some art supplies for Andrew. 